in the previous episode, we've talked about motions that are continuous in linear form. So let's talk about erratic motion. What do we mean? So erratic motion, in this form of motion, we are talking about motion which position please pay attention in this type of motion the position the velocity and the acceleration changes or are always changing so the position the velocity and the acceleration change and it cannot be described by a single continuous function it's changed and cannot be described by just a single mathematical expression unlike those motion in the continuous ones where we can use a specific function to determine its velocity. For the erratic motion, at a particular point, it has its own position function. At a particular point, it has a different position function. So throughout the journey, it is going to have various forms of functions where we are going to deal with. So for example, look at this motion where we are going to have our distance or displacement by time. And in this way, we are having a motion in this form. Do you see that? So this motion means from a point A to a point B here. It has its own function. And this part, C, is also having its own function. To D is having its own function at a particular time. So this, we do not write just a single expression for even velocity or position or acceleration. So from A to B, it is going to have a different function. Let's say function one with time. From B to C, it is going to have a different function, function two in terms of time. And C to D, it is going to have a third function in terms of what time so motions are changing therefore position and velocity and acceleration are also changing and they are not described by a single expression this type of motion is what we are referring to as erratic motion are we okay so now this is the st diagram since there are changes at particular points we can use that same changes at the particular point to draw the BT diagram and use the same expression to draw for the AT diagram, which is velocity and time, acceleration and time. It is very simple. It is not difficult. What we know is if we have from the A part here, in terms of the, here we have a function which is S1 in terms of time. If we differentiate the function at the first point, we are going to get it as a velocity function. Remember, if we say differentiation of the S1 with respect to the T, we are going to get an expression for only this motion at the first part. And we can use it to draw a motion at this first part. After getting the velocity first part, if we differentiate it also, let me call it V1. Differentiate the V1 with respect to time. We are also going to get an expression which we can use to draw for the velocity or the acceleration first part. So in that order, we are going to obey and draw the ST, the VT, and the AT diagrams for the various motion. It is very simple. Let's look at an example. So here, we have a graph which is showing different expressions for the motion. Please pay attention. So a bicycle moves along a street road such that its position is described by the graph shown below. 
construct the VT and the ET graphs from time 0 to 30 seconds. So here what we see is that the graph is giving us the motion of the bicycle from time 0 up to 30, how it is changing. And we can see that from 0 to 10, there is a change. So we have a different expression. And from 10 to 30, we have a different expression. This is what we are saying, erratic motion. Various points have different functions. Are we good? All right. So now let's try to draw the VT diagram. All right. So the VT diagram, let me write it. Let me draw it here. So this is going to be my V. And this is going to be my T. Now, from the graph, everything is going to be done from the graph. From the graph, that's the ST graph. What do we see? When we consider from zero, less than or equal to T, less than 10. I'm not adding less than or equal to the 10 because the 10 forms part of the first motion and the second motion. Pay attention to that. So from this interval, we have the position function to be x is equal to t squared. So at the same point, if we want the velocity function, then the velocity function for this same interval is going to be the derivative of the position, which is going to be differentiation of t squared. That is going to give us two t right yes so this is the corresponding function for this motion so we have to draw that on the vt diagram we have 2t remember the time is from 0 to 10 so with this if we put t to be equal to 0 meaning at t is equal to 0 v is 0 so it is going to start from the origin and if we put t is 10 we are going to get 20. So meaning at 10 seconds, it has moved from zero towards 20 this way. So this is what we have as what 20. So it has moved to 20 this way, right? Which corresponds to the 10 seconds. So that's for the first part. Now we consider another interval, which is the interval of 10 seconds less than i'm not adding equal to because of the forms part of the upper and the lower intervals t less than or equal to what 30 and with that the expression or the position function is 20 t minus 100 so its corresponding v is going to be the derivative of the corresponding x and if you differentiate this, we are going to get what? 20, right? So this is 20. So at time interval 10 to 30, which is 10 to 30, we are having it to be 20. So meaning it is at a position 20. So this way, this is it. So this is the graph of the VT. So once you have it this way, you can just show that it is coming down this way. Are we okay? All right, because it is ending here and it's ending at 20, you can just straighten that. Now let's look at the AT diagram. So this is the VT diagram. We are done. Now the AT diagram. AT diagram. I can also draw the AT diagram here. This is T against the acceleration A, right? All right, so now here at the first point, because we can only get A from the V, so we are going to focus on this. So here, the first part, we saw the function to be 2T, and here we saw it to be what? 20, right? It's such that you will not forget. So at the interval zero, less than t less than or equal to or less than 10 seconds the velocity was given as 2t therefore acceleration which is dv dt is going to be 2 right it's going to be 2 and this 2 means for the first 
10 seconds. It is 2. This is 2. If it is not a function in terms of t or the variable, you can see that we always start from the top and withdraw. So if it is 2, it will just move in straight. The same will happen to this part. It was just 20, so we just drew it horizontal. So there's, it is just a single value, too. So it will come up to this. So this is it. Let me draw it well. So it is coming up to the 10. So this is the 10. Now let's look at the second interval from 10 less than t less than or equal to 30. The velocity is equal to what? 20. Therefore, acceleration, which is dv on dt, is going to be zero. If we differentiate this, we are getting zero. So meaning at time 30, it is zero. So the motion is going to, this one is coming here. The motion is going to lie on that. Let me use it. So zero means it is lying here up to this point. So that is it. This is how we draw. So this is going to be a is equal to zero and a is equal to two. So this is the diagram for the et and the at. We do it with the initial graph given at the various intervals. So let's look at a second example and you. So this is a second example. Let me try to draw the AT and the BT diagram. So this says we should construct just the BT graph for the same interval. So here the question is just seeking for the VT graph. So this is going to be the T and this is the V. Now we are seeing some interval from zero to six. So now from the graph, we have interval from zero less than or equal to t less than what? The time is six seconds. We have the function given at that interval, which is x is equal to 0 0.5 t q. Its corresponding velocity is going to be v dx dt. And if you differentiate this, you are going to get 1.5 t squared. Is that it? Yes, that is it. Now, since we have the function in terms of t, we will have to draw. Now, if we put in zero, this is going to be zero, meaning at zero, it is starting from zero here. But where does it end? The end point is at six. When we put in six, that would be 1.5 by six. And this is going to give us what? 54. So meaning it is ending at what? 54. So do you see when it starts from the origin, when we have it as a function of what? The time, where we put in the lower and the upper limits. You see where it starts and where it ends. So it is starting this way, and that time is up to what? Six. Now the second interval is from six to 10. So from six, six less than t less than or equal to 10. My s is just 108. Therefore, the v is going to be derivative of what? s with respect to t. Now, when you differentiate 108, you are going to get zero. So zero means if this is ending here, we can just give some dotted line. And zero means it is lying on the line. So zero is on the line up to the final point 10. So this is the diagram for the motion. So here is indicating that it is dropping here and it is lying on the axis up to this. So this is for the erector or erratic motion. Very good. Check out for the next episode. We have a lot of questions that we are solving on the erratic motions to get more understanding. See you in the next episode. Kindly subscribe to the channel, drop your comments, and like the video.